What's up everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're gonna practice graphing super basic exponential functions of this form. It's really important to have a solid understanding of functions of this form and their graphs so that we can build on this and graph harder exponential functions using transformations. So hopefully by the end of this video, you feel really comfortable graphing any function of this form, identifying domain, range, horizontal asymptote, increasing, decreasing, all that kind of stuff. Let's jump right into our first example. I'm sort of giving away what the graph looks like. That's okay because I'm gonna show you how we could have come up with this graph on our own if we had no idea what it looks like. And I like this as a strategy because it works for any function. If you have any function and you have no idea what the graph looks like, you can get some idea by creating a table and plotting points, right? So if I plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, each end of this function, for each of those numbers, I get some output from this function. And if I have an input and an output, those together correspond to a point on the graph of that function. So let's do that. Let's plug in negative two. We get two to the negative two power. And here's why I like doing this as well. We have to review this. Negative exponent rules, we have to review this. What is x to a negative power? That's the same as one over x to that power, but positive, right? We can change the sign of that power. So two to the negative two is the same as one over two squared, which is one fourth. Similarly, two to the negative one is the same as one over two to the first, which is one half. So that means that negative two, one fourth, and negative one, one half, should each be points on the graph of our function here, which they are, negative two, one fourth, negative one half. I see those points. Now zero, this is good review. What happens when I raise something to the zero power? It's not zero, it's one. Anything to the zero power is one. So zero, one is a point. And anything to the first power, super easy, just itself, right? So two to the first power is just two. So one, two is a point. Finally, we have two squared. Should be easy, two times two is four, so two, four is a point. So we see that we could have used our table, we could have plotted these points, notice the trend, drawn this line through them. So what can we notice about this function? First is that it's increasing, right? It has this behavior, right up sort of behavior. As x gets bigger, y gets bigger, right? We're trending in that direction. Not only is it increasing, but the rate in which it's increasing is increasing. Right, so we say this function is increasing exponentially. What that means is, well, let's look. As x increases by one, right? From negative two to negative one, we are adding one to x. What happens to y? Well, we could say it increases by a fourth in this case, but then here it increases by a half, then by one, then by two. So that's what I mean by it's increasing at an increasing rate. So that's not an additive relationship going on here. It's multiplicative. Each time we're multiplying by two. One fourth times two is one half. One half times two is one. One times two is two. Two times two is four, right? We are repeatedly multiplying. This is the biggest distinction between exponential functions and linear functions. This is exponential growth, repeated multiplication. Repeated addition would be linear growth, right? That's why we end up with a line. We have a constant rate of change. Here it's not constant. It's increasing, right? So that's the biggest distinction here. This is an increasing function. It's increasing exponentially. We can call this two, uh, the increasing factor, multiplicative factor, right? But it's no coincidence that we have a two here in our basis two. Those always align, they correspond. Awesome, let's try another example. This time we can visually see that this function is decreasing. So let's make our table here. We'll practice this again. I think this is a good exercise. So we can plug in numbers. We can make sure they align with the graph that I'm giving you here. We can plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two. What happens when I raise one half to the negative two power? This is a little bit tricky. So applying the rule directly, what one may do is this, one over one half squared, right? Because that's directly applying this rule. X to the negative one equals one over X to the positive N, right? So my x in this case is one half, so that's in the denominator. I'm changing the negative two to positive two, and this is totally fine. This will give us the right answer, right? Because one half squared is one fourth, and one divided by one fourth is four. However, there's an easier way to do this, and this is the way I really wanna push you to do it moving forward so that you don't have to divide fractions or do any of that stuff. 
So there's a pattern here, which is that anytime we have a fraction and we raise it to a negative power, what we can do is we can flip the fraction. We can take the reciprocal. So instead of 1 over 2, we can make that 2 over 1, and we can make the power positive. So it's a slightly different way of applying this rule, but it still works out. We're going to get 2, and we can check it again. I'll do it in purple over here. We can do it to this example as well. See how much easier it is. 1 half to the negative 2, that's the same as 2 over 1 to the 2. 2 over 1 is just 2, 2 squared is just 4, boom. Didn't have to deal with dividing any fractions, right, any of that stuff. So a lot easier, that's what I want to push you to do. Take the reciprocal, make the power positive. All right, what happens when we raise something to the 0 power again? Well, that's 1. And we raise something to the first power, that's itself. What about 1 half squared? I think I did this earlier. Over here, 1 half times 1 half is equal to 1 fourth. You could write it out twice. You could also use the exponent rule and distribute to the numerator and denominator. So let's make sure that these points align with our graph here. We have this point negative 2, 4. That's right, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1 half, 2, 1 fourth. Looks about right to me, and we can see that this function is decreasing. Not only is it decreasing, but it's decreasing exponentially. So what's being multiplied each time to get to the next y value? Well, this time that is 1 half, which again corresponds by with our base. So our base gives us that multiplicative factor that we are repeatedly multiplying by to get each next y value, right? So if we increase x by 1, we can multiply y by 1 half, which comes from the base, and so now we can probably make a generalization because hopefully we can see that when we're repeatedly multiplying by something, if that thing is, for example, 2, then the product is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. If the thing is, for example, 1 half, then it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, repeatedly cutting in half, right? So can we generalize from this and say that any function of this form, if the base is between 0 and 1, that's a b, b is between 0 and 1, then that means the function is going to be decreasing because we're going to be repeatedly multiplying by a number that's between 0 and 1, right? 2 fifths, 3 fifths. If you repeatedly multiply by stuff like that, we get smaller and smaller. So decreasing, and we could call this decay. Sometimes this is called exponential decay. Whereas if the base is bigger than 1, then we're repeatedly multiplying by a number that is bigger than 1, so we're increasing. And we can call this exponential growth. So two important features of functions of this form. If the base is between 0 and 1, the function is decreasing. If it's bigger than 1, it's increasing. What else can we point out? Again, this red graph here is the 2 to the x that we graphed. This blue graph here is the 1 half to the x, so we we nailed down the increasing and decreasing part. Now let's talk about a horizontal asymptote. I'm going to abbreviate this with HA, horizontal asymptote. Every function of this form has a horizontal asymptote, and it's always the same line, y equals 0. We can visually see that from our graphs here, although keep in mind that the graphs approach this line from different directions, right, in different ways. So for example, this 2 to the x function as x gets smaller and smaller, as we move to the left, right, y gets closer and closer to 0. That's what it means to have a horizontal asymptote. As x gets smaller and smaller, y gets closer and closer to 0. Whereas with our decreasing functions, as x gets bigger and bigger, y gets closer and closer to 0, right? We can see this visually from our table. We're repeatedly cutting in half. Next is going to be 1 eighth, then 1 sixteenth, then 1 thirty-tooth, right? Closer and closer to 0. So both of these have horizontal asymptotes, and all functions of this form do. They just may approach them from different directions, depending on whether they're positive or increasing. Let's see. What else can we say? Domain and range. Let's talk about everyone's favorite. Domain and range. So the domain of these functions are all real numbers. We can write that using a fancy R. We can write that in set builder notation, x such that x is a real number. Maybe you've seen that before. I personally like interval notation, negative infinity to infinity, all the numbers in this set, right? Three different ways to write the domain. We can see this visually from the graph. What are the x values represented? Well, all of them. We can move left and left. We can move right and right, right? Every x value is represented. 
We can also think about this intuitively from the graph. What X values am I allowed to plug in, right? Are there any restrictions? No, there are not. So I'm allowed to plug in any X value. So all real numbers. Awesome. For the range, remember, domain has to do with X. Range has to do with Y. So now we're scanning the graph up and down. What are all the Y values represented? Graphically, we can see that the Y values represented are all of the Y values that are bigger than zero. Let's write that out. Y is bigger than zero. Hopefully we can see that. Our horizontal asymptote, right, the curve here is getting closer and closer and closer, but it's never going to hit zero, right? So it's all the Y values greater than zero. We never hit zero. We can think about this as it relates to the function. For example, let's think about this function here, 2 to the X. So graphically, we're looking at Y values. We can also think of range in terms of outputs, right? Domain is inputs, stuff I can plug in. Range is outputs. So is there a way for me to plug something into this function and get out, for example, zero, right? Can I raise two to a power and get zero? Well, no. There's no power I can raise two to to get zero. What about something negative? Can I raise two to a power and get negative one half? No, that's not possible either. If I raise two to any power, I'm going to get something bigger than zero. And so that's why the range is y is greater than zero. So we can write it also using interval notation from zero to infinity. For set builder, you just place the y greater than zero in here. Y such that y is greater than zero. Awesome. What else do we need to talk about? Increasing, decreasing, horizontal asymptote, domain, range. Let's identify a couple of key points. Key points. This is really important. Once we start graphing these using transformations, we're going to use these key points and even actually moving to the next examples. So these are points that you can immediately, just looking at a function of this form, you can graph two key points without plugging anything in, making any table, doing any of that. So one of them is the point 0, 1. And that's because, as I said earlier, it doesn't matter what the base is. If I raise it to the 0 power, I get 1. 0, 1 is a point on every function of this form, b to the x. You can see it here. What's another point? 1, b, the base, right? So if I raise anything to the first power, I get that number itself. So graphically, we see that on the red function here, 2 to the first, right? I plug in 1, I get 2. And we also see it with 1 half. So those are our two key points, and we're going to use these moving forward with a few more examples. What I encourage you to do here is, now that we've identified some important features of all graphs of this form, try to see if you can graph this on your own. Make a table, plot your key points, think about what is the domain, range, identify the horizontal asymptote, is this function increasing or decreasing, pause the video and think about this. Awesome. All right, hopefully... You've paused it, you're coming back, you're using this to check your answer. So first of all, is this going to be increasing or decreasing? Well, the base is 3. That's bigger than 1. So this is an increasing function. It's going to look like this going up, right? Awesome. What are our key points? So remember, we have two key points, 0, 1, and 1, B. The base is 3, right? So without making our table, I could have initially come and just bloop, 0, 1, bloop, 1, 3, and done that. And in fact, if I've done those two things and I know that the horizontal asymptote is the line y equals 0, you can probably safely just do this. I mean, unless you're, doing, you're taking a test and your instructor's like, plot five points or draw a table or tells you what to do. I mean, this looks pretty good to me, right? We can get a little bit more accurate by plugging in 2, for example. If we plug in 2, we get 3 squared, and that's equal to 9. So we know that this point is here. Maybe that's a little more accurate. But honestly, having these two points and a curve through it, if I were grading this, I'd be like, hey, this looks good to me, right? But for practice, let's just plug these in, review our negative exponent rules. So 3 to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over 3 to the positive 1, which is 1 third. And this is the same as 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. What's another thing you could have done? Well, knowing this multiplicative relationship, right, getting to each next y value, I'm multiplying by, in this case, 3, we could start at a y value and find the previous one by dividing by 3. 1 divided by 3 is 1 third. 1 third divided by 3 is 1 ninth. So you could probably guess, seeing the pattern, what happens when I plug in negative 3? I get 1 over, what is it, 27, right? The denominators being multiplied by 3, which is the same as dividing by 3. 
cool relationships here that we're pointing out. Awesome. Hopefully you got a good draft drawn. You can see that the domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. The range is from zero to infinity. We have these key points. We have this horizontal asymptote. We're just going to try two more examples. So this was an increasing function. Let's try a decreasing function, this time one-third to the x. Plot your key points, make your table, identify these things, pause the video, come back to check. All right, I'm going to go pretty quickly through this. We know this function is decreasing, doing something like this. We know it has a horizontal asymptote. That's the line y equals 0. All right, so the horizontal asymptote, y equals 0. We know that this function is decreasing. We know we have two key points. When I plug in 0, I get 1. When I plug in 1, I get 1 third. And so again, we could probably sufficiently draw our curve like this. If you just want an idea of what this looks like, if we want to be a little more specific, more accurate, we could come in and fill in our table. We know that to the 0 powers 1, to the 1 powers 1 third, we already have those graphed. And again, this time I want to try to use that same relationship I talked about last time. Each time we're multiplying by 1 third, right? So this is going to be 1 ninth. And what's the relationship in the reverse direction, right? We're dividing by one-third, which is the same thing as multiplying by three. So from here to here, we've, multi we've divided by one-third, or multiplied by three, same thing. Multiplied by three, multiplied by three, multiplied by three. And we can verify these. One-third to the negative two power is, in fact, nine, right? So again, shortcuts, things we're noticing that are going to make our life easier. And now we can go and plot this point here make our graph a little more specific, right, and draw a little bit better of a curve. Hopefully you see that the domain and range are exactly what we talked about previously. The domain is all real numbers. The range is all numbers bigger than zero. We have our horizontal asymptotes. So the function is decreasing. Awesome. One last example. I got to talk about E. It throws so many students off. It's just a number. I'm going to write it as approximately... 2.7 and so this is an increasing function because the base is bigger than 1 right so we can expect it to look something like this increasing we could make our table but it's still gonna have those two key points right we're still gonna have that point at 0 1 and 1 e which since it's 2.7 ish it's gonna be somewhere around here right this is an irrational number kinda like pi so no matter what we have to round if we want to write it using digits. So it's going to look something like this. You can find the exact values, like what is e squared? 2.7 squared. Let me punch that in real quick. 2.7 times 2.7. 7.3-ish, right? So somewhere around here. And then let's see, what is 1 over e? Well, let me do that. Okay, 0.3 seven ish right so it's going to be somewhere down there so it looks as we would expect an increasing exponential function to look like don't be thrown off or scared of the e you can fill in this table if you want round to some decimal places try it yourself like punch this in a calculator but hopefully that makes sense when you see e it's not a variable it's just a number and it's an ir irrational number so if we want to figure out where these things are on the number line, we have to get approximations of them. Those are terrible approximately signs, but that's all right. All right, hopefully this video helped. We went over some basic exponential functions. Hopefully you feel comfortable graphing these. Try one-fifth to the x. Try seven to the x. Try different stuff. Get this really down so that when we add transformations, you don't have to think back and relearn this stuff. You have a super solid base so we can make these functions a lot harder by adding crazy transformations. Hopefully this video helped. Like, comment, subscribe, but most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see y'all later.